The ability to collect a bunch of objects into a collection is great for organizational purposes. And we can take that collection of objects and then instance that to the scene for repeating objects, like we can see in this architectural scene. In a previous tutorial, I talked about the fact that there's actually a built-in add-on in Blender, just type in edit here, called Edit Linked Library that allows you to reference externally linked files and bring those in and have those operate like collection instances. And it's super awesome because you can very easily pop back into the original file, make changes and pop back into the main scene. And those changes propagate through the scene. It's wonderful. So you can watch my video on that. But when you're inside a Blender and let's say that you've made a set of instances of a collection and you don't want to go through the process of separating that to a separate file, you just want to set instances of the collection, inevitably you're going to have to make changes. That means you have to go find the source of the collection, which can be in a very complex hierarchy, find that, make changes to it, and have those propagate through the scene. And that actually can be a real chore. I have not found a way of being able to select an instance, such as this wall segment, and then come over here and have it find the source of that collection for me. It's a real workflow challenge. So it turns out that I actually found a small add-on that's free that does this for us. So here's the website on GitHub for this add-on that somebody created. So it's called Edit Instance Collection. And it says an add-on for Blender that allows quickly editing collection instance source collections. That's exactly what I wanted. And what you do is you got to come over here under code, download the zip. And we're going to talk, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute because there's one thing that we need to modify. Once you install it, you would come over to Blender and you would do your install. And we're going to come back and I'm going to show you this because there's a little slight thing here that you have to do to make this work. Once you've done that, let me open up another file that's part of this project that is a complex stair setup and it has lots of instances of, of a collection. So let's come over and take a look at one in particular. So this is a bunch of repeating items. So what this add-on does is it allows us to come over to the object menu and way down here at the bottom, say edit instance collection, press A key to select everything, fit view to selection, and there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just selecting all and then I'm doing a frame selected and that just brings that into view. So I can come in and make whatever change that I need to make can make editing there and I can come in and add another loop. I've decided I want to add a loop and then I'm going to do a function to give that a hard edge. So, you know, I can just do the little editing operations that I want to do. And then when I'm done, I need to return back to the main scene, but it's different than editing linked libraries. What this plugin is doing is it is setting up a temporary stage for just these items. You can see it right here where scene is the main scene that we're working on. The way you return back to the main scene is you simply click the little X button here to remove that stage and then it returns us back to the scene with those changes propagated through all instances. Okay, there we go. So let's do another one that's a slight bit more complex where I've got another instance of a collection, but this collection has instances of other collections in it. So what we'll do is we're just going to come over here back to the object menu where the add-on has been installed as a menu item. And there we can see that data. So the bolts underneath are instances of another collection that's nested in there. So if I want to make a change to that, then we invoke it again. And it's just going to create a new scene, which is just sort of a staging mechanism. A key, and we're going to do frame selected. So if I want to make a change to this, I'm just come into edit mode. I'll add a loop right in the middle. And then when we come up here to the scene area, we leave edit mode. 
you can see that I've got the stair assembly. So if I can pop to that and I can pop back to the single bolt in order to edit that, but I can remove these. So I just come over to the X and we remove stair assembly. And all those are, are just stagings of data that's in the main scene. So we're removing them. We're not removing any data from the scene. And there we have made that change which has propagated to all the instances in the scene. And it was so easy. It was so freaking easy because it's just, I can access it by selecting the instance here and jump in to find that data without having to come over here and navigate through a complex hierarchy in the outliner and figure things out. There's one thing that you need to do to make this install correctly. I downloaded that file and in Mac OS it automatically unzips it but you need to leave it as a zip file in order to install it. But something wasn't installing correctly and I couldn't figure out until I looked inside of the actual directory. This init file that's inside of source, you need to move that up into the main directory and then you just need to recompress that as a zip file. And then once you do that, then this will install. You just come over here to preferences, add-ons, install, and then you'll just need to enable it. That's all there is to it.